Hello, and thank you for joining me today for a discussion about Caterpillar's UPSB 125 UPS. The Cat UPSB 125 starts at 60 kVA and runs up through 120 kVA. I look at it dimensionally, it's 1,900 millimeters tall, 712 millimeters wide, and 850 millimeters deep. The all-in-one configuration is a huge competitive advantage for the UPS 125. At 60 kVA for 5 and 10 minutes of battery runtime and 80 kVA for 5 minutes of runtime, you can see that we're able to put the entire package in a UPS footprint of only 1112 millimeters. Still at 1900 millimeters tall, we can support 60 and 80 kVA up through 5 and 10 minutes of runtime. Let's take a look inside the UPS B125. Notice at the bottom the connections points. There's ample room for routing and bending cables. You see there in the bo red boxes the input breaker, output breaker, DC connections, and the bypass connections. The bypass is a static bypass. It's integral to the operations of the UPS. There's also a maintenance bypass internal to this UPS, another competitive advantage. It does not require an external maintenance bypass, which typically requires extra cable, extra space. The maintenance bypass allows for the UPS to be worked on while still supplying the load with utility power or generator power. Here you see the rectifier section of the UPS B125. The input frequency is from 45 to 65 hertz. No input neutral is required. If a neutral is required by the site, it will be passed through the static switch to the load. The chopping frequency is fixed at 5,000 hertz. Chopping is the frequency that the rectifier chops or cuts the incoming sine wave. The rectifier utilizes six fully controlled IGBTs that are protected by ultra-fast fuses. Here you see the battery charger. The battery charger draws power from the 800 volt DC bus. Depending on the rating of the UPS, the charger will deliver between 18 and 50 amps for the purposes of battery charging. The charging system is sized to recharge a battery offering 30 minutes of backup time in less than 8 hours. The charging system incorporates independent regulation and monitoring devices. Voltage regulation by battery voltage measurement current. Charge current regulation by battery voltage measurement circuits battery voltage monitoring circuits, which is independent from the regulation system, and a charge current monitoring circuit, also independent from the regulation system. DC ripple is less than 1% of the DC voltage. There is a battery meter that indicates the remaining backup time. This can be accessed from the front screen, which we'll look at in a few moments. Here we see the inverter section. The three-phase inverter with IGBTs, a non-isolated capacitive half bridge, the term non-isolated refers to the fact that there is no isolation transformer as in older topologies. The capacitive half bridge simply stated means that the load is always powered by the DC bus and that the power is conducted through an inverter connected with the, in a half bridge configuration. The inverter operates at a variable chopping frequency of approximately 5 kilohertz. During steady state, the output voltage will be held to within plus or minus 1% of the RMS values of the phase to phase voltage. During an overload situation, the load is immediately transferred to bypass, assuming, of course, the bypass is within tolerance. During a transient event from the load, the UPS will handle 100% step loads with no more than 2% voltage change in RMS values phase to phase. Transient response to within 1% plus or minus range of the RMS value is less than 100 milliseconds. Let's talk for a minute about communications. We talked about the, the HMI or human interface screen on the front of the UPS. The UPS can communicate in 18 different languages. It stores 2,500 time-stamped events, allows the operator to view statistical information about the UPS and its operation from the front screen. Communication interfaces include Modbus, RS-232, or RS-485 using the JBus protocol, and SNMP. Let's talk batteries and battery cabinets. Caterpillar offers both adjacent and remote battery cabinets. The adjacent battery cabinet provides a matching battery cabinet loaded with BRLA batteries for installation adjacent to the UPS. Connection cables to the UPS are provided with the adjacent, but not with the remote for obvious reasons. There's no way for us to predict how far the remote battery cabinet will be from the UPS. Each battery cabinet is provided with a battery disconnect breaker size for the batteries provided. Battery disconnect options. 
For customers that choose to provide their own batteries, a battery disconnect becomes a mandatory option. UPSs must have a way to disconnect from its battery source under certain conditions. Let's talk for a moment about input options. The drawing on the left shows a one line of a dual input system, which is standard. The single input configuration is depicted by the use of that dashed blue line. The image on the right shows the input connections of a dual input system. You see number 16 is Q1, or normal input. Number 15 is Q3BP, or the bypass input. And number 14 is Q5N, or the output. A single input system would only have cables connected to number 15 and internally jumpered to the correct inputs. One significant difference is that KA1 and KA2 are optional in the CAT UPS B125. You find this listed as backfeed protection. This pair of contactors provides isolation of the UPS from its utility source during discharge and often required by local code. Let's take a look at the maintenance bypass. Shown here in red is an advantage for the CAT UPS. As we discussed earlier, this allows the unit to be serviced without interruption to the load. Of course, as always, we recommend having the system on genset power prior to doing any service to assure continuous power while servicing the UPS. Coordinated service calls is yet another good reason for purchasing the entire system from Caterpillar. A top cable entry is also available from Caterpillar. Notice in the photo on the left, the additional chimney, which only adds 140 millimeters. The terminal block strip and the picture on the right, all connections except the battery are, are able to be dropped right here to this terminal strip. The alarm relay card option is one of the optional communication devices for the UPS B125. You may assign a predefined operating status condition to the various output relays and to the predefined UPS command. Input relays one through six are controlled directly by the UPS. All changes of, a st all changes of state on the inputs A and B are transmitted to the UPS. The network communication card allows the user to directly connect the UPS to a computer network. The card simultaneously operates as a web server and an SNMP agent. Remote connections are made using an ordinary internet browser or a network management system station. This network management card provides email and text notifications as well. The Modbus JBus card option provides the different UPS conditions and measurements in JBus or Modbus protocols. The JBus hexadecimal or Modbus RTU protocols are used in slave mode. The system provides a communication channel with an RS-485 or RS-232 interface. The environmental sensor option enables the environment to be monitored taking regular measurements of temperature and humidity. The connection to the network management card enables monitoring or notification of alarms via a computer network. The external sync option is a unique option it's not to be confused with paralleling, however. This option allows the UPS to remain synchronized with any external source. It could be another UPS, utility, or even a genset. The UPS B125 is well organized, easy to maintain, energy efficient, with plenty of customizable communications. Thank you for allowing me to go through the UPS B125. We think it's a wonderful product. We know you'll enjoy it. Thank you and have a great day.